So if you didn't make elevation band, we can do it here. So let's just go here and try to put some elevation band. So I import file and I browse and it gives me a make elevation band folder in my in the utility program which resides in my project. So this is my Mendoza project. Now I have the something in the iteration. I have saved one iteration. And in the utility program, I have make elevation band. Now there is a PDF readme file that if you follow, you can easily make an elevation band. And I'm just going to go through that because uh, many people seem to be using this. So I just just follow the steps here. It says in the ArcSwap project database, export the table watershed as an Excel file. So I, I go to my project database, which is uh, um, go to my project. This Mendoza, that is my project database. So I will open that. There should be a file called the uh, table called watershed here. So I'm just going to export it says export this as an excel file so i will export it as an excel file where into my that the same folder that means in the go to where my project is uh mendoza project and then i have uh my swat cup project here and utility program and make elevation band so i put this file here Copy it, export, yes, everything. Okay. Then uh, I, I close this. And then it says um, open this file in Excel and delete all columns except surface and area, elevation mean, and elevation max. So I open this file. And then uh, I delete everything except subbasin. So I delete these. Um, area I need to keep. And then elevation min and elevation max. So I can delete all of these. Keep elevation min and max. And then I can delete the rest as well. Right? Back to my instruction. So I did that. It says in a new column, calculate diff equal to elevation max minus elevation min. So in a column called diff, I say it's equal to elevation max minus elevation min equals and carry this to the end. And next, uh, it says, um, Delete all the rows, which are my subbasins, where the difference is too small to consider elevation band. Keeping in mind that temperature changes about minus 6 to minus 15 degrees per kilometer, and precipitation can change between 1 to 1,000 per kilometer. So anything less than kilometers or so is... Uh, uh, you know, I, it can be deleted. So here I have only 17 um, subbasins, but you may have 2,000 subbasins, and we don't want elevation band in every one of them. So we only keep elevation bands which are um, of a certain distance between the minimum and the maximum of subbasin. So in one of the steps, that I should sort this. So I sort it here, go to data, and yes i have the minimum is 695 meters so i'm going to keep everything i'm going to keep everything so if this was like 100 or 200 or anything less than 500 maybe i would delete it but uh, there are all large differences in elevation in every subbasin. so the next thing is Five elevation bands are usually quite sufficient. Use the following formula to calculate the mid elevation of each band. So max minus mean divided by 10 because I want five elevation bands. So I want the middle of each band to calculate the middle of each band. So if this is my diff divided by 10, basically. So I have a column called D 
and it's equal to like this divided by 10 and copy everywhere so I have this and then it says calculate E1 elevation band 1 is elevation mean plus 1 times E elevation band 2 is elevation mean plus 3 times E 5 times E so I jump from the middle of each elevation band to the next elevation band to the middle of next elevation band and so on so I'm going to have therefore E1, E2, E3, E4, and uh, E5. And then E1 is equal to elevation band minimum plus 1 times E. That this is that. And the next one is equal to uh, minimum plus 3 times E and the next one is equal to minimum plus 5 times E and the next one is equal to minimum plus 7 times E equal and the last one is equal to the minimum plus 9 times the P. So these are the midpoints of uh, my five elevation bands. And I copy this, uh, I copy it everywhere. And then what it says, it says sort on subbasin and copy columns Subbasin E1 to E5. So I sort on subbasins here. Uh, sort it expand, yes. And then copy, it says subbasin. So let me just copy this one here. And then these five elevation bands I copy. And then I like to paste special because they are formula special as values here so I have my elevation band and then what so I have this yes then it says edit um, then it says sort in here and then copy this into notepad file called elevation band dot text now there is an example already uh, here um, so If I go to the uh, my utility folder here, um, there is some previous examples here, so I just can copy it in here. It says copy it in elevation band text here. I have this from a previous work showing you as an example. So I copy line, control C, and then uh, copy it here. Control, delete, control V. So I copy mine in here and save it. And then what? Then it says uh, edit elevation band definition file with correct number of elevation bands and final number of subbasins. So I go here. Now notice I have uh, 1 to 17. I have 17 subbasins. Uh, these are the numbers that I want. If I delete some, you have to not account for those, of course. So I have 17 subbasins. So I go back to this folder and elevation band definition. I have 17 subbasins and I have five elevation bands. So this is correct. So I edit this and save this. And then next, what should I do? It says uh, copy topo rep dot text from your art SWAT project. This is in watershed text into your working directory file topo rep dot text. So I go to my um art slot project in watershed in text uh, topo rep text. So I copy this and then I bring it uh, into my project here folder utility and I copy it here. Of course I have one from previously so I just copy on top of that and then it says what should I do it says 
The topo red font has annoying dashes. Run the program replace to get rid of these dashes. So uh, topo red, yeah, right. I have all these dashes here, so it's hard for program to read this. So I just run the replace, and I get rid of those dashes, and it copied it on this topo.x. So the dashes are gone. So next, what do I do? And then run elevation band dot exe. So that's the last step. I run elevation band dot exe, and it gives me a file called model dot in with all of my elevation bands. The next thing I do is I copy model dot in, copy into my art swat main folder, main working folder. I copy that here. Paste it. There is one, so I overwrite it. So my SWAT edit, if you remember, SWAT edit is the file that replaces parameters into their rightful place. So if I run that, that SWAT edit reads this file, model.in, and does what it says here. So I'm just going to run the SWAT edit. So it ran and it put those elevation band values. I can check into the sub. Yes, so here it put all the elevation bands values here and elevation fractions here. So that's how you can add. I um, just took a few minutes to add elevation band to your project. Now, the next step is P lapse and T lapse. I mean, Elevation band by itself doesn't do anything unless I specify these lapses. Have two T laps and P laps now based on uh, what I have uh, discussed previously. If I go back to my SWAT cup project, the next thing I want to do then, therefore, is to uh, sort of fit or calibrate uh, T laps and P laps. Now again, examples here, these are some examples. You can easily uh, grab some parameters from here so you don't have to look for them everywhere. So I copy this here and also t -lapse, I copy it here. So what it tells me is that I need to fit these first, right? Before doing anything else, I need to fit these two parameters to get my elevation band. 